So that is our total energy of our LC circuit. What's really cool is this. It has a resonance frequency. So here is really some cool analogies that will help us understand the frequency of an LC circuit. And really this is how radios are made, how all oscillators, including synthesizers and any, any uh, radio transmitters, and this is how they were originally done. Uh, so it's kind of cool that we actually get to get this far. Now, first of all, let's recall omega for a pendulum. And the angular frequency is always the square root of something over something. If you make this thing longer, what happens to the frequency? So here's a short pendulum like that. The longer one is like this, slower, lower frequency. So where does L go in this thing? The longer the string or the longer the distance from the axis or the pivot point to the center of mass, the lower the frequency. So this goes on the bottom. L goes on the bottom. The higher the acceleration of gravity, if you're on Jupiter, this pulls harder, basically it goes faster. So it's G over L. There's our angular frequency for a pendulum. What is our angular frequency for a spring block system? Well, what are the factors that affect that? Well, if you've got a really massive block, will that make this thing, like I've, in other words, I'm trying to push this thing back and forth on a spring. If it's really massive, will that make it go back and forth faster, higher frequency? Or will that make it harder to go back and forth? So a big mass is gonna lower the frequency. M goes right here. What's the other factor? The spring constant. If the spring is very stiff, it'll go back and forth faster. So it's K over M. Now, what I want you to do is use logic to figure out what is omega for an LC circuit? It is the square root of something over something Let's think about it this way. If you've got a really big capacitor, will that push harder? Or will a really big capacitor say, oh, we got plenty of room, come on, charge, keep going, keep going, and not resist so much? The bigger the capacitance, the lower the frequency. It just doesn't push as hard. A large capacitor is like a really weak spring. So a tiny capacitor would be like a strong spring because tiny capacitor, you push one electron and it's like, get off of here. So uh, it's a little bit different than a, the spring constant because the capacitance, the bigger the capacitance, the weaker the spring is. Now, how about our inductor? Our inductor is just like a mass. It really wants, a mass wants to keep its velocity constant, an inductor, wants to keep the current constant. So if you've got a really big inductor, just like a really big mass, it is much like a mass, will that, a big inductor, make this thing oscillate faster or oscillate slower? The bigger the inductor, the slower will be the angular frequency. They both go under here. What goes on top? Ah, just a one. So this is the angular frequency of an LC circuit, if you add an R in there, a resistor, it'll decay. But this, without a resistor, it'll just oscillate like this. And you've got a sine wave. You've just created electronically a sine wave. What do you wanna do with that sine wave? Maybe you wanna make a musical tone. Maybe you wanna make a carrier frequency for radio. You can do all kinds of things. By the way, just a fun tidbit, if you add a resistor in there, if you have any real circuit that's got resistance, it will decay, meaning the amplitude will just go down like that. But in our idealized RC circuit, the current is like this. You've got an AC current going there with our LC circuit. Cool, folks. That is about it for AP Physics. So until next time, this is JB Free signing off. Great work this year. Fantastic. I can't say enough good things. 